Hi, this is an example from a all rules derivation. Um, this is definitely possible to do with only the basic rules, but the all rules obviously make it a lot easier because we can essentially power through our assume ID and get something quite useful to use. So let's start by writing out the question. Show there exists x, there exists y, l, oops, of x, y, y. Okay, so now we can just do the assume ID, L, X, Y, Y, and that's A, I, D, and I can immediately just quantify or negate this. Uh, quantify or negation is just pretty much an automatic move. You can do it whenever you want because it doesn't really change anything. Um, so I just like to do it immediately so I just don't forget. Now, you might be tempted to quantify or negate this one more time and move this in, but you're not allowed to do that. We know we can quantify or, negate, quantify or negate later, but we have to peel away this universal first. So once we UI, then we'll be able to QN. Should I UI now? No, because this is not actually a buried existential like other questions we've seen. The reason why is because when I actually QN this, this will actually become a universal. So we're just gonna leave that for now. I'll mark that as a reasonable use for line for the future. Okay, so on line four, I basically now start looking at the premises. This premise here is a massive conditional. So I know that I will want, most likely, the antecedent to get to the um, consequent. Actually, it is possible that I could build the negation of this consequent, but doing that is actually going to be sort of a pain. Um, we'll see. Uh, the reason why I think I'm going to go for the actual sort of um, antecedent here is because premise one is in terms of f's and g's, and it looks like I'll be able to do something out of that. Now this here is the classic buried existential, and we've seen this before in other videos in class and uh, also just everywhere, and it's very straightforward. What I'm gonna do first is I'm essentially gonna do a blind UI. This is the only time that I would advise doing a blind UI, and that's when you UI to something doesn't really matter, I've just kept it to X uh, without really matching. Uh, the reason why is because I want to get at my existential instantiation, which I will do now, fx or gi, brand new letter. So that's 4ei. Okay, now obviously I can demorgans this and I get not fx um, and not gi. Okay, no problem. Now, the thing is, when I'm looking over here, if I want there exists an x, fx, biconditional gx, That means what I really want is I want F alpha by conditional G alpha, which means what I really want is F alpha arrow G alpha, and I also want G alpha arrow F alpha. Now this is sort of my guidance. Now the trick here is that I can obviously need my alphas to be the same. So while I'm sort of building my little construction here, I should notice that these are not the same. This is not fx and not gi, so I actually want to make them match. Now, when I realize that I want to make them match, and particularly when I've done a blind UI, I almost always have to go back and UI again to match into something I want. So now I can actually pin the fx to match the gi, and then I get the following, not F I or G Y. Uh, and that is premise one, and I'm UIing it again. Now, of course, I don't have a choice. I must EI this, and that's going to go to some new variable, J, and that's 7 EI, and I can demorgans this, and I get not F I uh, and not G J, and that's 8 demorgans. Now, just to make this super explicit, the reason I did all this work is so that I can actually have two parts that match that are resemble um, my F and G. And that the first, sorry, G I got from line six, simplify, and my F I got from line nine, simplify. Okay, so now I'm in business. I actually have done everything I can with this premise, and I actually know I'm trying to build this right now. Um, Notice I haven't actually done anything with my LXYY, but that's because I have no guidance on what to match, so I'm just leaving it be. So here we go. This is what I need to show. I now know, according to what I have, that it's reasonable to think that alpha should actually equal I. 
So what I'm going to do is show it. First I want to show fi arrow gi. Okay, well the first thing I do is I assume cd and hey look, I have a contradiction immediately. On line 14 I can just repeat not fi and that's 10 repeat 13 id and I have now shown this. On line 15 I will show the other way. gi arrow fi I know there's other faster ways to do this, but I'm not too concerned. Uh, 16 GI, and that's assume CD, and on 17 I get not GI, and that is line 11, repeat, 16 ID, and that closes that. Okay. So on line 18 now, I can go backwards and I'm going to build the biconditional and I get fi biconditional gi and then that is line 12 and 15, conditional to biconditional and then I will existentially generalize that to get fx biconditional gx and that is line 18 eg. Now the point of all this was now I can modus ponens and I now have for all x there exists a y for all z l x y z and that's line 19 premise 2 modus ponens. Okay so to finish this proof is very straightforward it's basically just a game of matching and doing things in the right order. I'm basically looking at my line 20 and over here my line 3. Those are the, my two L predicates and obviously they're going to contradict with each other. And I just need to be careful, I just got to go one way at a time. So should I UI this first? No, because I don't know what to match. And this might look like a blind EI, um, but it's not, or sorry, a buried EI, but it's not because when I QN it'll be UI. But over here I do have a buried existential, so I'm actually going to go after that first. So on line 21 I will just UI my for all x away and I get there exists a y for all z, l, x, y, z. I just left the x as x. That's line 20 ui. And I did that so that I could ei immediately. And I get for all z, l, x, i, and j are k taken, so I'll take k, z. And that's 21 ei. But now I can look over here and I realize that I do have a, a, a fixed letter here. First slot of L on line 22 is fixed to X. Here, first slot of L on line 3 is actually anything, so I'm going to make them match. On 23, I'll have UI, and I get it's not the case that there exists a Y, L, X, Y, Y. And um, that is line 3, UI. 24, I will quantify or negate this to get for all Y, not L, X, Y, Y, and that is 23, QN. Now I'm going to modus ponens line 24. Why? Because if I look over here, slot 2 and slot 3 can change to anything. But over here, slot 2 of my L predicate is fixed to K. So I need them to match, so I'm just going to UI to match. And I get not L, X, K, K. And that is 24 UI. And on line 26, I realize this is the finishing move here. This is LXK anything. This is not LXK K, so clearly I need to UI the Z to a K. And I'm going to get L bracket XKK K from line 22 UI 25 ID. Box and close. Okay, this proof was very straightforward. There's basically three major components of the proof. The first major component is tackling premise one. And you need to know that you t to tackle premise one, we're actually going to have to do a blind UI, EI, and then we're probably going to have to re-UI when we know what we want. So an, a big component of the proof is actually up here in figuring out what it is that we want exactly. The next big step is related to this, and that's building the antecedent of this premise, and so we can modus ponens. And the final step is actually getting my assume ID and this other L business to contradict. So three parts to the proof and they're all actually very easy. Now you could have actually done this proof in a variety of different manners, so if you want you can actually try and build the negation of the, uh, the consequent here to modus tollens and then that's actually quite nice because then you can just uh, 
quantify or negate, and so on. Uh, that's actually a very nice and quite easy way to solve the proof. Um, and you can also try this with just basic rules. Anyway, give it a shot, and just remember this proof basically flowed from basic, sorry, from the golden rule, EI first, UI to match. Good luck.